Right. Um, thank you. So as a Chinese artist studying at the United States, um, I find myself placed in a foreign culture and so become very conscious about my identity, deeply rooted in Chinese culture. Um, and also placing outside of China, I'm able to understand the issues in contemporary China better. So um, look through Chinese history. Authority always plays a dominant part in social and political discourse, while people remain silent. Um, the authority creates signs that are highly politically charged and contains ideolo ideological messages. And see the I see these signs as myth, not in a literary sense, but rather as William Barthes is stating his book Mythology, a language strategy utilized by uh, authority to signal a naturalized speech that conceals ideological messages. So the authority will use anything they can use, so they remove the earlier meaning of the object and put the new meaning into it according to different historical purposes. So, like, and the, and the myth created by um, authority is ubiquitous in China, influence every aspect of China, um, of the people's life. And people have no voice in this kind of sign-making process. Therefore, I'm very excited when I read the deconstruction the theory. Um, as Derrida stated that there's no mutable connection between signifier and the signified as unified whole. So a sign is not necessarily limited to uh, an absolute or univocal messages. It can be used by every individual to express a distinctive voices. And this is what I'm, I'm seeing on the, uh, what, what is exa exactly happening on the internet in China right now. Like peop because the um, strict control of web, or, uh, web censorship, people become very creative about using metaphors. And here's one example. Um, this man is a famous poet in Chinese history, and he showed on the textbook as a patriotic poet. So it starts from a very naughty student who drew on the textbook during the class time because, because he's, he was bored. And then <laughs> it became a, um, an internet carnival where everyone started <laughs> to use this figure and transform him into like a terrorist, a soldier, a baseball player, a McDonald and everything <laughs> like that. So I found it's very interesting between the, between the, the difference between the government controlled vision versus the critical voice on the internet. And I tried to find an element that will connect these two together. So I think the stamps is a very good, uh, good place to start. So when you look at a Chinese painting, you probably notice there are a lot of stamps on it. For me, the stamp is form of authority that not only um, stated the um, authorship of the artist, but at the same time it's a certificate of ownership for the um, collectors. And the ep emperors in ancient China used to use his appreciation seal on the painting on his selected painting, so the stamp become more important than the painting itself. It's a kind of commentary on the painting as well. And I see the, contem uh, the QR code as a contemporary style of stamp. Not only it looks like stamps, but also like everyone can use, can create their own QR code, put anything in it. And also the, the what, what is more great is that unless you scan it, you never know what, what it is in, in it. So I can get, I, I will not get in trouble if I put some bad words in it and put it in a public space in China. <laughs> Therefore, I, um, I first started use some motifs in Chinese culture will, which will express good wishes. A rooster crown and a kitty day both means officials because they have the similar sound as officials. Therefore, a kitty date on top of a rooster's crown will symbolize getting promoted in public services. And they always send it, like people will send this symbol to the officials. So it's, it's kind of like a gift. So I, I replaced the kitty date with a uh, dead cricket. <laughs> because they look like si look similar, but at the same time, uh, it has different cultural background. The cricket is because it's really, it always fight, it fight all the time, and it's aggressive. And it's part of Chinese culture to listening to the singing of the cricket and at the same time watch them fight. So it's kind of 
amusement. And I think the cricket is a is the best symbol for the officials because the officials are similar. They they are standing and they are fight with each other, and they are like presenting something really good to the public. So to invite it, um, all of you guys into another layer of reading of this image, you can scan this QR code and it will go to a web page on my uh, on my website. It's about an anti-corruption official found dead in his office with more than 10 stab wounds on um, all over her body, his body. And he was announced as suicide. I was like, really? <laughs> so, <laughs> and you are welcome to leave a comment on this image. So here the QR code become a living stamp where not only the authority place a comment and like everyone can come in and comment on this image so it become more like more interactive and this golden animal here is called Pichu because he offended the uh, emperor of heaven so the emperor of heaven sealed his animal so he can only eat gold but without expelling yeah, that's that's great so everyone wants to keep it like so he was bringing wealth for his owners and here I connect this animal with the Red Cross, which symbolizes the Red Cross Society of China. The Red Cross or organization is supposed to raise funds and help the people, help the people who need help, right? But actually now the Red Cross Society in China has a really bad reputation. The people in this organization actually take advantage of their position and try to get profit from it. So for me, this organization organization really become like the, the animal, the Pichu, who are only gathering wealth but without giving them out. And here's a rotten cabbage. The cabbage symbolizes wealth in China because it, is it has the similar sound as wealth but at, sim at the same time because it only have two colors, white and green. It symbolizes incorruptible, clean, and innocent. It, it also symbolizes a simple way of life and it is a symbol of self-cultivation. And this, this link, uh, this QR code will link you to the news about the booming luxury market in China involved with corruption and bribery. And here's a decaying peach blossom. Um, an Asian poet write, wrote about the peach blossom colony where people are isolated from outside and they live a really a uh, peaceful life and lives harmoniously with, with society. So it's, it's kind of a symbol for the utopian view of life for Chinese people. And nowadays, China becomes such a profit-driven place. The government starts to introduce all these kind of toxic factories that not only pollute the environment, but also um, endanger people's lives and also bamboo because it's always keep upright no matter how harsh the environment is. And so it symbolized perseverance and integrity. So uh, I find a curled bamboo and I placed it up and right and take a photo photograph it of it. So I think a photography, um, photography is a really great medium for this project because it speaks the same language as myth. It gives a vision that's seemingly objective at the same time, it is really purely of subjective. And river crab means harmony in China because, again, it has a similar sound as harmony. And harmony is uh, the most important ideology priest, uh, priest by uh, Chinese government. And ironically, the harmony actually is achieved by secret detainment, uh, strict control of free speech, and also um, web censorship. And interestingly, on the internet, the people starting to use the word harmony in a really interesting way. So if a website is, is blocked, they will say, oh, the, the, the website is harmonized by the government. So I will wait was harmonized by the government. And if I keep in talking about those bad things about Chinese government, I will be harmonized as well. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and then I use the pantyhose to form the beautiful form of uh, lotus, which symbolize incorruptible officials in China. And of course, this QR code goes to uh, um, about the sexual scandal related with official corruption. 
and the landscape painting is very important form of art in China, um, different from the Western landscape painting, which is a, a realistic representation of nature. Uh, Chinese landscape are more about the self-expression, and also because the painters in ancient time uh, are usually officials as well. They are called s scholar officials. So uh, the paintings are closely related with the authorities. And the officials using this kind of form to, to express their uh, social and political viewpoints. So what is excluded from this harmonious look of the painting is the real con living condition of people and the severe uh, political struggle behind it. So I decided to use dead crickets to reform this peaceful landscape. And this time I shoot the a straight bamboo, but I used the stains on the dead bamboo to reform the beautiful landscape again. And here's some details as you look close. And also I'm inspired by the this very famous painting called uh, Along the River During Qingming Festival. It's very famous, a long scroll, scroll of painting showing the a prosperous life in Song Dynasty. And what is happening now is, and this video, is this is a YouTube video uh, showing the businessman work with uh, government to try to people to uh, move out and they can get land, build a house and get money from it. And the, the, the lady you see here are the people who live there and who try to fight back. So. And of course, it's censored from um, in China. And I used the stills in this video to recreate these long scrolls that resemble the, the Song Dynasty painting. Here's some details. And I don't want to limit it to the um, art world. Of course, I will show it in a gallery, but at the same time, I want more people to get access to these paintings and comment on it. So I put it in a pul public space. This is Savannah on Broughton. And this is the in the capital city of China. It's, it's in Beijing. So I'm deconstructing those traditional Chinese signs and subvert it with some really ugly reality in it. But really, my deepest hope is to bring in the real harmony and the real in incorruptible officials back to China. And my uh, it is my deepest wish for a more civilized and more democratic future of China. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.